I want to introduce to you the product director for panel management solution, John Johnson. Hey, John, how are you doing today? Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you again, Gina, for the introduction. Yeah, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule to join us today. We're looking forward to seeing some new and exciting things brewing in the panel and community world. Um, to the right there, you'll see a really cute picture of my dog hanging out with John's kids. So let's go ahead and get started with <coughs> excuse me, this month's um, education hour titled Research and Community Building with a Roadmap. And on today's agenda, we will be discussing um, whether or not your research plan needs a makeover, um, GOT panel, the cost-benefit analysis for a panel, how to add panel to your survey analytics account, a demonstration on survey analytics, which will be live, as well as panel health plus data received equals what? And we'll also be looking at some new features that we have available on survey analytics and then open up um, and then close the session with a Q&A session. So let's go ahead and get started here. Does your research plan need a makeover? As technology continues to shape and change the world we live in, we've seen the market research industry needing to change and adapt some new research technologies. Um, technology makeovers and market research has resulted in social media now as an integral part of market research. We've also seen improvements in data collection, including online, offline surveying tools, mobile research, We've also seen an explosion in the sample and third-party panel providers. And all of these things are replacing the traditional pen and paper, phone surveys, and even some coding departments. So a lot of major changes have come from advances in technology. <coughs> Excuse me. And we've also seen the creation of new research roles and job descriptions. Now we're noticing that IT is working a lot closer with market research, um, the market research department to closer attain those research goals. Um, and as well, we've seen an enhanced, um, some major enhancements in data analysis tools and reports. Um, you're not just going to get an Excel report these days, you're, also, you're going to get an interactive reporting tool that you can take with you on the go and you can slice and dice um, in real time if you need to. Um, so this is a, a very major thing in technology and how that's influenced the data results. The last major thing we've also seen um, as a major makeover in market research is big data. Big data is a, a place where people are collecting a lot of interesting information all in one place. Um, and maybe they've already been collecting data for a long time, but now they're using it um, to slice and dice, do segmentation, uh, trend reports, uh, especially with their loyal customers. They want to track trends from, from decades before, and they're using it to make some very uh, big decisions um, regarding their businesses. So a very big question to ask yourself is, is your market research strategy changing along with the new technology? And moreover, as the technology continues to change, are you willing to change your strategy to, to match that as well? Let's go ahead and talk about some research makeover tips. Um, we spoke to a few of our clients about technology adaptation and research methodology changes, and here are some really great tips that we'd like to share with everybody. Um, the first one is a major overhaul is not always necessary. You know, do what makes the most sense. You know, if your, you know, company doesn't have a strong social media presence, maybe it's time to make that a priority so you can see, a, you know, a great uh, return on investment towards the end of the year. Um, the second one would be, you know, put together a new research implementation plan for the year. So if you're going back to social media, what are you trying to stop, accomplish with social media? Are you looking to build a panel and use social media to recruit in it? Um, those would be very easy numbers to quantify um, by the end of the year. Also, prioritizing items that's going to give you the most cost savings at the end of 2014. Um, I put a number out there, a timeline, because I think that's really important, especially in a company 
to put out a goal and see where you started off with and where you're ending. So in general, right now, um, fall, winter time is time to plan for 2014. So I think it's 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 very you know pivotal to be able to prioritize things that you can see um, right away that will help you with you know putting your putting your game ahead of everyone else by the end of the year next year. Um, the next thing is to delegate a person or team who will champion and be responsible for everyone's contribution towards the new plan. So a new market research plan is only as good as the people that are going to execute it. You know, great ideas are always going to be great ideas, but it's not going to become reality without the right people pushing behind there. And of course, the last one is to follow through and make sure everyone is on board with the new plan. Um, essentially, it's important to, you know, sell the dream, but also make it a reality and make sure everyone's on in tune and ready to go with it. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the next slide here. So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so the next slide is Got Panel. You know, when, any, uh, when adding any kind of new technology, there's a lot to consider. Um, so, for example, implementing a panel management solution. Um, with Survey Analytics Panel Management Solution, it provides you uh, with services for creating your own panel or online community um, portal. Um, and you're also able to create and manage your own um, online or mobile community or both. Um, after recruiting your panel, you'll be, you'll be able to create targeted segments of your panel and also send surveys and other email-based marketing materials online or via mobile. Um, you'll be able to also set up you know, events and things that people can um, be a part of, such as online or community discussions, um, post quick questions and get immediate feedback um, from your uh, participants. Um, the panel is fully customizable to fit the look and feel of any desired online community, whether or not you want to have your brand on it or if you want to keep it anonymous so you can do some competitive research. That's totally up to you and what your research goals are. Um, the last thing you can also do is you can also manage your points and rewards um, and the participants that want to earn. So basically, you'll be able to you know, incentivize something that's personable um, and gives them something to work hard for. Here's a list of clients who are currently using the panel management solution. Um, Ivana Tiller from DIY Marketer says that the panel is an ideal solution for companies whose customers are engaged in social media. In industries where your products are perceived as a commodity, Panels are a standout way to really differentiate yourself. And if you can manage an online survey or your own Facebook profile, you can manage a panel. And it's easy as clicking a, a few profile selections, sending an email, and that's it. Um, so she pretty much um, says it all there, where you know it's, it isn't as hard as people think it is. Um, as long as you have a plan um, set in place with some goals uh, to reach um, and what you're looking to um, answer in terms of building the panel, then all these things will come together for you. Here's some really good traits of successful online communities. Um, we spoke to some of our biggest clients who are working with Survey Analytics Panel Solution, and they shared some key elements that make the panel solution work for them. <coughs> Excuse me. The first thing is that they're able to control the process of validating the response, the respondent, and use the custom panel developed. So that means that they're able to go in and screen every single person that comes into the panel and says, and they can control whether or not they want that person um, to be a part of their community or not. Um, the next thing they're able to do is to commission market research studies with a homogenous sample. Um, for and target key panelists by results, you know, overall. So by either by gender, age, consumer profiles, and more. So say for instance, if you got an, a, a panel and you only want to target women for a particular study, um, you're able to do that within your panel and and get some very insightful information from them. 
On the third thing, for data segmentation, panel owners are able to slice the data on key questions and assorted research topics. And the same uh, conclusion was derived for each question asked. Um, the big trait that makes this all worth it for a lot of our clients is that the in-house results were completed two times faster and it was 10 times cheaper. Um, that is a, a huge cost savings for people who brought the, um, brought the sample um, and are controlling the sample um, by building these panels versus outsourcing it to a third party. The next trait is that the custom panel should not be used to replace nationwide sampling, but there is a place in groups like research and development where organizations have a need to provide a cost-effective and quick turnaround to address some consumer perceptions, uh, perceptions and feedback. So that means that, you know, there are going to be times that, yes, you will need to go out and look for a sample provider that can give you some, you know, additional information. However, um, it will save you a lot of money if you don't have to do that every time and you've got your own in-house uh, panel or online or mobile community that you can use um, to answer some very quick questions and keep people on track with what they think are you know, some consumer feedback things that they can use for R&D and such. And the last item here is having a tool like this helps organizations manage their risk in their decisions through the product development cycle. So that means that, you know, for a company, you know, for them to be able to do very quick feedback surveys um, or pose different questions or even do an online or mobile discussion um, they're able to just quickly tap into their own online community or mobile community and get that immediate feedback to make some major decisions quickly. Um, and it has been very beneficial for a lot of the clients that we're working with. So the next slide here um, is basically a man on the road. Do you have your own panel yet, and if so, if you're considering it, there are many things that you should ask yourself before making the investment. So let's take a look at what those things are. Um, first one is, you know, are you a trendsetter or a follower? You know, are you like Apple, who's kind of, you know, setting the bar for the majority of, uh, of people in their industry? Or are you JC Penney's, who's, who's kind of playing catch up at this time? Or are you a mix of both? You know, where do you stand um, as a company and in your industry? The second question would be, you know, what is the value of staying connected with customers in an exclusive community? As we saw earlier, you know, it will give you industry, you know, research uh, that's prepared information for yourself. It really influences positively um, with some data that you can collect for research and development. And, you know, if you are, um, if your community is, you know, very dependent on the voice of your customer, you can do a lot of, you know, VOC dependent surveys. Um, so that is a huge value for those who are, you know, targeting, you know, industry information as well as R&D and also customer feedback. Commitment to setup and maintenance. Um, I like to talk about this a little bit because, you know, a lot of times people in theory, they already know that having an online community um, or a panel of their own is always a good thing. However, um, do they have the commitment to set up and maintain this? Do they have someone in place that's ready to take this on um, fervently and make this dream into a reality um, and it's it's really got to have you know a team or a person within the team that can really push this and make this a go um, you know buying the software is just one thing but it is still a DIY software so you will need to spend the time to to get it up and get it going so putting muscle to the hustle is what I like to call it a very key component to the success of getting a panel and if you can't if you don't see someone in that role or you don't see your team able to commit 
and maintain the panel, it's it's really not in your in your um, best interest to take on um, the panel uh, at this time. So you definitely want to consider those. Other things you want to look at, you know, with uh, these kinds of um, decisions on whether or not you want to take the panel on is, you know, what questions are you not able to answer with your current research? Um, for example, you know, how many times has a particular person or profile or respondent participated in a research study and given you significant data to work with? Um, unless you are tracking it, there's really no way for you to know and engage these particular people for exclusive studies. It's a, um, it's a really important, it's a really valuable thing in panel to be able to see who those people, who the people who are most loyal and are responding to you um, are. And you can do a lot of very interesting things. You can give them more incentives. You can talk to them exclusively and build a, a great relationship with those who really want to give you some very good feedback. <clears throat> Next one is how much money are you already spending on third party sample and outsourced research that you can use to create your own panel? Um, this is a big area in research where costs can get out of control if you're not able to find the target respondent group from sample firms. You know, GenPop is easy to access, um, but if you're looking for a nano brewery that only brews, you know, 200 barrels of Hefeweizen, it's basically a needle in a haystack and very costly to find. The next question is, what's the potential benefit of bringing it all in-house? Um, how much money will your market research department save by allocating those costs of purchasing sample or outsourcing your research and using your existing lists and partnering with marketing to, for those uh, uh, for recruiting efforts. I mean, those are things that you can tap in right now that will, will be a lot more cost savings versus you know outsourcing it out. Um, do you have a person or a team that is capable of rolling out and maintaining an online community? Again, um, I always reiterate this, but this, too, this step really is crucial in getting any new research plan off the ground. You really do need a champion or a team of champions to sell the dream all the way to the top. Um, the last one is, will you be able to pitch this idea to your team, your CEO, or your board members to back you up? Many people we've talked to along the way like the idea of a panel, but they're not sure how to pitch this. And this is why we're doing this presentation, so you can ask yourself these questions and look at the cost benefits before pitching a panel solution. Um, just going in and saying we need a panel just because everyone else is doing it really isn't going to cut it anymore. And even if you manage to win them over with it just because, it's not going to be successful without a well thought out plan. The cost benefit analysis for panel. You know, everyone knows that taking on a panel solution is going to cost money and it can take time to build and maintain. Um, you will need to do a cost benefit analysis for your own company and decide whether you have the right resources in place to reach that optimum value and cost for your investment in, your, in the solution. So you can see on this uh, screen here, um, you're looking at business benefit, productivity and effectiveness, cost benefit efficiencies, and, and everyone needs to you know, aim for that optimum value and the cost. So sample versus panel cost benefits. There's some interesting stats as well as common issues that come up with sample purchasing. The average market research firm or a research department will spend you know, 50% of their annual research budget on sample or acquiring respondents or an incentive. That's quite a bit of money. Deploying online studies with you know, 300 plus completes requires um, a sample recruitment and incentive budget between four to 15,000 per project. You know, a lot of market research firms or research departments will need to 100% trust the respondents from sampling firms um, whether or not they fit the profiles exactly or the specifications needed. Generally speaking, a lot of the research companies or research departments will stick to um, an average of three panel providers 
regardless if the respondents or project specs required are not 100%. Um, that means, you know, um, when I was working in market research, and when John was working in market research, I know that we had um, a particular panel provider that we went for to for gen, gen and pop data, and then we went to these other people for, you know, small business owners, and then we went to another one to try to, you know, target CEOs of companies and uh, and stuff like that. And so, um, generally speaking, this happens quite a bit. Um, and a lot of times, you know, we, we say that it's important to go out and go beyond your three and see if there's anything else out there. Um, but better yet, you know, instead of going out, maybe it's time to look into recruiting your own so you know that these people fit those profiles exactly how you like it. Um, the last thing that we see pretty standard is that firms don't always question panel company recruitment strategies or how they maintain it. Um, every panel company will mention how they do this and how they maintain it, but you know, a lot of times research companies don't want to be bothered with that information, so they don't really ask. And so, um, you know, unless they start real, unless there's an issue with a project where they get a bunch of people that don't qualify into a specific uh, profile that they're looking for, that's when then they're, they're going to ask. So, you know, it becomes a very costly mistake, not just for the, you know, market researcher, but also for uh, the panel providers, because nobody really wins in that situation. Um, so, so these are things that you should consider when you're thinking about, you know, the risk that you're taking um, with doing a panel versus sample. I mean, there's still, you know, definitely a, a market and, and a need for you to go buy sample when you absolutely need it. But in order to control, you know, who's who's going to be in there, what kind of profiles you have, you know, a panel really can, um, you know, provide you with exactly who you're needing for some very, you know, interesting studies. So the cost-benefit analysis for panel. You know, every business needs a way to objectively determine the business value of any investment decision. And, you know, you got to look at the overall bigger picture of everything. You know, how is panel going to affect your overall company in terms of costs um, and investment? So um, these are just some uh, six items to look at when you're looking at the overall picture. So the first thing you want to do is just analyze and, and view and analyze the value of all the investments in your in your firm, whether or not you know it's where your your headquarters are, who are your employees, you know how's the technology is changing. If you're going to add on panel, how's that going to change your overhead, your costs, um, and how much it's going to change the cost for your projects, etc. Um, second thing is to prioritize an initiative and uh, prioritize initiatives and allocate funding based on the value for department or company. So in a company that values research and development first, you're obviously going to be able to pitch the idea of panel a lot easier versus someone, uh, a company who values sales over research. So, um, so it depends on, you know, the hierarchy. So if you think um, below <coughs> on the right there, you'll see um, if R&D uh, and market research is a high priority, you know, allocating the funds to take on a panel is kind of a no-brainer, and that should that should be very easy to implement. But if there um, is some needs uh, for sales and then technology and then R&D is kind of on the bottom, it's going to be a harder sell, and um, it might be an important thing to look at and try to re-pitch the need for um, allocating funds to these particular departments. <clears throat> Number three is um, whether or not it's going to make better decisions sooner or it will, you know, add to your bottom line or your revenue. Um, generally speaking, when we, we talk to our successful panel users, you know, the panel, when they implement it, has actually saved them uh, quite a bit of money. You know, it's, it's ten times cheaper. They said they get the data two times faster. So if they need some immediate decisions to be done, they can run a quick project and get some feedback so they can, uh, you know, steer their ship, so to speak, in the right direction. Um, so, so that is a really good thing to think about uh, if you are adding 
a panel to your solution. Also predict the impact of changes and eliminate unneeded costs. So anytime you're implementing a new technology, um, does that mean that you might need to lay off people or do you need to hire new people or uh, do you need to move people around um, or is there any kind of you know old technology that's slowing a company down that you need to upgrade? These are things you have to think about when you're looking at in implementing <clears throat> something like a panel solution because you know now that you are able to do a lot of things inside the tool, you know, you can reduce a lot of waste and redundancy um, and do it all in one place instead. So that makes it, you know, very cost effective. Uh, number five is, you know, increasing utilization levels of current systems and resources. Um, this is one thing, you know, this is why we're doing Education Hour um, because, you know, a lot of times when we speak to clients, you know, they don't, you know, they're stuck, they want to do the research they have, you know, set in place, and, and we understand that. Um, but we're always here and available to show you, you know, what we already have and what you can use more of. Um, so whether it's, you know, doing any offline surveys on an iPad or, you know, an Android tablet, or if you're looking to do mobile surveys or uh, get immediate feedback through QR codes, those kinds of things. Um, we have that technology, so feel free to reach out to your account managers and, you know, do a training session on some new items that you're considering that will help you with some, with implementing a new technology and make sure that you, you're, you're getting the full value of the tool that you're using at your firm. The last one thing, uh, the last thing is to balance out any value with any possible risks, you know, obviously, when you're taking on a panel, it is it is kind of a high risk. But on the other hand, you're going to have high rewards. What's the end goal? You know, if you have a very clear and concise goal, the risk that you put into taking on panel solutions is going to pay off immensely. Getting started on panel, um, this is where I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to John, and he's going to go ahead and discuss how to get you started with panel. John, are you there? Yes, thank you, Esther. Can you confirm that you can see my screen? Um, yes, I can see your screen. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for all that great, valuable information that you have presented thus far, and hopefully everyone is still rocking and rolling with us. So let's talk about getting started um, on panel. I mean, obviously, we're talking about building a roadmap and making sure that you're ready to take this on and figuring out how you're going to get from one point to another. So the first thing you definitely gonna to wanna to do is create the blueprint. You wanna define and build the profile information based on your research goals and your needs. Doing so um, is gonna help you in two ways. It's gonna allow you to be able to segment who you're deploying these surveys out to, as well as allow you to be able to analyze the results side by side with this information that you've collected. Um, it helps um, reduce respondent fatigue, of course, because now you have uh, a defined database of profile information in which you don't have to continue to ask your community's questions over and over again that you already have the answers to. But your community members also can update this information um, and keep it relevant, keep it live, and keep it fresh for you. Another thing you can do um, when getting started on panel is tap into an existing database. Why not? Why start from scratch if you already have an existing database and then build upon that database? Um, you may have a database that you already use internally. Um, you may have old online surveys that you conducted where you've created, uh, where you've asked or requested for their email address in which you can reach out to and ask them if they want to double opt in into this new community that you're starting. Point three is that you definitely want to set up points and rewards in the areas in which you can. There may be certain projects or certain clients that you're working with where you cannot do this, but in the cases where you can, it's a great strategy. Um, points and rewards um, are, are gonna um, increase, um, it's gonna keep your community members happy, it's gonna keep them operating and functioning um, within the community, and so it's, which means your cooperation rates are gonna go up, um, and you're gonna get more complete, it's gonna keep them incentivized, and it's easily integrated in our tool. 
and with that being said, you know, you want to set up a recruitment and retention plan. With your recruitment, you want to know how often you're going to engage with your community. And knowing this, and knowing this strategy, and, and knowing that you're going to continue to build upon your existing database and get more members in here allows you to start thinking about the retention. And thinking about the retention is going to come into play on how often you're going to engage once you've recruited this panel. And once you set up your engagement strategy, that's definitely going to help with your reputation. Your members are going to know, and your community is going to know how this community operates, how it moves, how often uh, they can, they're going to be engaged with, and, um, and what type of things are going to be required of them. <clears throat> and so you want to set up that engagement plan and schedule, which again, that's going to help with the reputation. And so rather you're going to be doing uh, surveys once a week, once a month, every quarter, and you can switch up the way that you do this. You may want to do um, some traditional surveys in which you just deploy out through the community. You may want to do some surveys that require them to use uh, the community use a native app where you can do geo-trigger surveys when they walk into a particular location or exit a particular location. As well, you may want to just ask a few questions within a survey and rely, on, and rely on passive data collection that comes from the life metrics data that we provide via the native app as well. Um, so many different strategies and a lot of different things that you can do in setting up that engagement plan uh, and schedule. And then you want to decide what kinds of reports should be generated and which profiles and segments do you want to share uh, internally or with your end client. Just having that and knowing your client or knowing what your internal team needs um, in terms of reports in order to do analysis, in order to make decisions, just makes it far, uh, far more uh, easier, more efficient, effective, and quicker to be able to roll out that information to your team. So let's actually take a look um, at the Survey Analytics panel platform. Here we're inside of Survey Analytics, and you can see that we're on the tab that's labeled Panels. And here's where we can access our panel communities that we've created from an administrative standpoint, standpoint, and we can also start to create new communities. I'm going to take a look at this craft beer panel here. And as I mentioned, one of the first things that you want to do is go over here and select Member Profile. And you're going to want to define your profile fields. What does that mean? Well, do I want to know these individuals' birth dates, their zip codes, their gender, what area they're located, um, what they're into, all of the information that I'm going to want to use in order to decide who I want to deploy a particular survey out to or information that I want to analyze alongside my survey results. And we make that easy in the Survey Analytics panel too. You sim simply click Add New Profile Field, give that a title and a label, select the field type, rather it's a single select, multi-select, or a free form input, as well as um, we can assign this information to what we call a custom variable. And this assists us um, in a viewing, and this will assist us um, um, in terms of doing online analysis. Okay. And so in this uh, beer panel that we've done, the example here is uh, Sierra Nevada. And so we've set up some profile fields that make sense. We may want to know which other following uh, brewing companies are you familiar with, how much beer do you consume in an average week, and what type of hops that you're into. Okay. And another thing, as I mentioned, we may want to utilize the points and reward system. So Survey Analytics has a module under their panel for points and rewards, in which we can quickly set up a reward inventory. And here we've set up I'm a Walmart gift card and an Amazon gift card. By simply clicking Add New Reward, we can jump into adding our own custom rewards, or we can use our integrated vendor and access their catalog of online incentives. Once you've selected the rewards that you want to offer to your members, you can set up a point strategy. And this falls, on <clears throat> this falls along into your overall um, uh, strategy for your community as well. Incentives, of course, are going to um, come into play, and um, it is a cost, so you want to make sure that you have decided how many surveys per year, how much points that they're going to be worth, in which 
how much, uh, how many points is it going to take to be able to redeem an incentive for your members? And that'll help you do a, help you do some budgeting in that area. And again, we make it very easy to tap into an existing database. We can click export import data, and we can do a bulk import of users. And at the same time, we can double opt in this user base. At the minimum is required is an email address. Um, and this is an Excel file. In the first, uh, the first column, we're going to have email address. In the third, uh, in the second, third, and fourth columns, we can use first name and last name and password. And password is great. If you're taking them from an existing system and they already have a password, um, it makes a, a really easy transition um, for the user base. And you can see here the following uh, columns that would be in my Excel or CSV file are going to be the member profile fields that I've set up, such as birth date, zip code, gender, etc. And so if I already have this information on my existing database, I can import that information and get started right away in deciding who I want to send out surveys to or analyzing, uh, analyzing the results. Once I've deployed out the survey to this community, okay, I can now access the analytics and looking at our real-time dashboard system. And this is a new feature on survey analytics, and it's great because I can go ahead and dive right into the questions in my survey. If I don't like looking at reviewing this in pie charts, I can um, <clears throat> quickly change the visualization. And I also get this handy filter. This filter is going to allow me to dive in um, from questions of the survey and time variables, but as I mentioned, also by the member profile information. So now I can start to slice and dice my data based on that profile information, such as gender, or which the following craft brewing companies that the member is familiar, familiar with. So in that example, Really what we're talking about here is Sierra Nevada Brewing. And let's say they want to start their own panel and test new beer flavors um, entering to the market. Okay? So as I said, the first thing they want to do is define and build profile information based on a typical craft beer consumer. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and two, they want to tap into an existing database. So see, Sierra Nevada um, <clears throat> does have a beer camp brewing with other craft brewing companies across uh, the U.S. Okay. And this is actually a really uh, cool thing for those who are, uh, are brewers, and uh, I wish I was one because I would definitely sign up for the beer camp. But another thing that we do here is we, in point three is recruit via social media. Um, okay, and we can also, what that means is, you know, you can tap into your Twitter, your Facebook, if you have a strong online presence. But there may be other uh, marketing tools or things that you distribute out or that you work with. And on those things, you could feel free to point them towards um, your online community. And this really plays a big part in the recruitment strategy and getting other, uh, other members into your community and building upon um, your existing database. And the deployment plan is, you know, send beer surveys, send profiling surveys, online or in-person discussions, or new, um, you know, send surveys on new flavor ideas, etc. Engage them based on your need, but use a myriad of different things that you have available to you. It doesn't always have to be a 20-question survey. You can do quick polls. Um, again, as I said, you can when they um, come into a location, specifically a particular brewery, you can have a survey deployed out to the user so they can engage with that survey, uh, survey right away. And we also offer um, live discussions. And so you as a panel admin can set up a forum and jump in and start chatting with your community on a specific topic and get real time on the spot information uh, right back to you. And if you can, points and rewards such in this uh, Sierra Nevada example, um, iPhone bottle openers. Why not? That is so cool. To all who sign up for the um, for the craft beer mobile community, they're all going to get a Sierra Nevada craft beer uh, uh, bottle opener for Sierra Nevada. That goes right onto their iPhone, right? So this is cool. People like things like these. They like to, they like to engage. They have this. They see it. They relate it to the community that they got it from, and so they continue to participate. And six, decide what kind of reports again should be generated. For your brewers and beer consumers. And 
that's a great point because not only can you share data internally or with your end client, um, but also you can share spotlight reports or or, or, or an overall um, <clears throat> overall stats or information with your entire uh, community base. And here we have a, a great um, a great chart here um, on stat called Stats on Tap, and you can see where all the gallons of consumer uh, the gallons of beer is being uh, drinking around the United States. Um, some very interesting uh, things that you find on this map here. Um, I'm in Washington and uh, Esther is in Oregon, so she's currently beating me out. So I got a weekend ahead of me to try to catch up. So I'll get there. Another thing, let's think about this panel health. We want a healthy panel. We want to know that at any time we need to do a research project or we want to reach out to our community that we're going to get good insights, good data, and good information that's going to help us make decisions and going to help us be more efficient, increase productivity, and hopefully generate more revenue. Okay. So survey analytics is very unique. Um, we allow for not only to assess your panel health and survey data, but side by side. Um, we can look at the profiling inf information with survey data. Okay. And that allows us to offer additional insights and possible changes uh, based on response rates. We can also look at the measurements to determine if we need to change the panel recruitment or management strategy. Um, if we're just not hitting the level of users that we want to join, we may set up independent recruitment tracking units and see what is working better for us. Our homepage, our uh, Twitter feed, our Facebook, etc. Which of these areas are working better for us and where do we need to double down in terms of our recruitment strategy? On the other side of that um, is the management strategy. Which type of surveys are our users really connecting with? Um, are our surveys too long? Are we not offering enough points for our surveys? All this information and data is right there alongside of our survey data inside of our panel health. And not only can we see this on a broad spectrum, but we can drill down to a specific panelist and view the history of the surveys they have taken and start to get some insights into that particular user or community member. The panel health dashboard is going to allow you the ability to look at your member activity, obviously. Also, it's going to allow you the ability to determine the sample size and also find the confidence interval for these users. Okay? Look at acquisition rates, attrition rates, and email invitation. Bottom line here is make your panel intelligent, right? Make it work for you. You have all this information, now let's make it intelligent. So uh, that we can really take all the data that we're gathering and get some great insights and you as a panel administrator um, can start to become more effective, efficient, and get a lot of functionality out of this tool. And so as uh, your user base increases, your data increases, so does the intelligence of your community and uh, in the way that your, the panel administrator is going to be able to work with the community. And what's new in survey analytics? Well, I did give you a brief look at the dashboard once I looked at the data that was rolling in um, for, the, uh, for the panel for Sierra Nevada. And you can check out that we have the enhanced dash dashboard reports. And it's great um, and easy to share, and it offers the following things. The options to filter questions um, and responses by time and on the fly, by questions and responses and time on the fly, as well as those custom variables and any data segmentation that you've applied. You have the options to view the data in different kinds of graphics and download for presentation and reports. So you have control of the visualization that you are um, giving internally or to your end client or to your users. And you can download these reports and save them as PDFs as well for easy distribution, as well as you can online share uh, this dashboard. Esther? Well, thank you so much, John, for all that great information there. So um, we wanted to share with our attendees here today, you know, for anyone who is joining us and you're interested in, in picking up a panel solution um, to get started here before the end of the year, uh, we're offering a 10% discount on all mobile and panel products. Um, in order to qualify for that, you just have to attend the panel um, presentation today and also mention <coughs> your attendance to account. 
manager or sales rep to qualify um, to receive a discount. So this will be this discount's available until the end of this year. Um, and so if you're planning on uh, adding a panel on, you know, take advantage of this discount if you can. We're we're here standing by to help you um, get started as soon as possible. So thank you, Linda. And next slide. Um, so thank you everyone for attending. Uh, Gina, I was wondering if there's any questions there for John and I to answer. Uh, yes, we do have a question just in regards to panel. How soon can you get a panel up and running? I'll take that one on. Um, it's actually fairly simple. Um, I think we did a webinar before in which we said it takes 30 minutes to set up and get going. And realistically, it honestly does. Of course, you have to have a strategy. There's the implementation, and then there's the overall, uh, your recruitment strategy as well as your survey deployment strategy. But the actual setup, you can actually have a panel live up and going with your member profile fields, and if you're uploading an existing database in 30, in 30 minutes. And then you can start to tap into the design etc. We make it really easy and there's really stellar support with survey analytics. You're always going to have an account manager on your side uh, to walk you through and uh, get you um, from one point of the map into your destination. Great, thank you John. And then one more question. We have, is there, are there ways to recruit people into a panel from your own website and not on the survey analytics sites? Sure, I'm gonna let Esther uh, answer that one. She she loves she loves talking about how easy we make that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Um, well, basically, you know, we do offer templates uh, for the panel recruitment tools, um, in which you can use and you can customize. But you're not limited to just those things. If you're interested in using your own website and um, have that being a recruiting opportunity for yourself. Um, we do have uh, forms that you can plug in and an integration tool that you can use um, to get people to sign up for the panel. Um, so again, you're not limited to what we're just offering to you um, in terms of being able to recruit on your own website, using your own you know, site and design, whatever you'd like to do. Um, those things are available to you as well. So we make it really easy. Um, in terms of you know putting together a recruitment strategy uh, and customize it to your own look and feel. Great, thank you, Esther. And at this time, we have no other questions, so we can go ahead and wrap this up. And I want to thank everyone again for joining us this afternoon. And I will be sending the replay of this presentation to everyone who signed up. And also look soon for our invite to our next education hour, which will be after the new year. Thanks.